Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace the Arab Parliament Speaker Adil Asumi, who presented to His Majesty the Jordanian House of Representatives Speaker Adil Karim Al Dughmi, the Yemeni Speaker of Shura Council Dr. Ahmed Abed bin Dagher, the Speaker of the House of Representatives of Djibouti Muhammad Ali Hamad, the Speaker of the Assembly of the Union of the Comoros Mustadrion of Abdo, UAE Federal National Council member and Deputy Speaker of the Arab Parliament Muhammad Ahmed Al Yamahi, and the Deputy Speaker of the Parliament and member of the Omani State Council, Dr. Hassan bin Ali al-Madhani, to greet His Majesty upon their visit to the Kingdom, to participate in the conference, to launch the document on education development in the Arab world under the slogan Bahrain the Gateway to the Development of Education in the Arab World, which is held in Bahrain and organized by the Arab Parliament in cooperation with the Ministry of Education with the participation of the speakers of Arab legislative councils and parliaments, as well as representatives of the relevant organizations. They conveyed the greetings of the their leaderships to His Majesty the King and their wishes of health and happiness to His Majesty, as well as progress and prosperity for the Kingdom and its people. His Majesty asked them to convey his greetings and his wishes of progress and prosperity to their leaderships and people. His Majesty congratulated them on the launch of the document, which keeps pace with global challenges and developments in this vital sector and promotes common Arab interest, wishing them all success. His Majesty hailed the brotherly relations between Bahrain and their countries and the development of joint cooperation in all fields, especially at the parliamentary and legislative level, to achieve common goals and interests to serve the nation's issues and develop the educational process in the Arab countries. His Majesty the King praised the Kingdom's history in the education sector and its pioneering achievements throughout his educational journey spanning more than a hundred years. He expressed appreciation for the tireless efforts of the Ministry of Education and the development plans and programs it implements to advance the educational process in the Kingdom. His Majesty also affirmed Bahrain's support for all efforts that strengthen joint Arab action and serve the interests of the Arab nation to meet the aspiration of its people for further development, wishing them all success in their endeavors. For their part, the heads of Arab parliaments expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for what Bahrain provided for the success of this conference, commending His Majesty's initiatives in the all fields and his support for the Arab Parliament, praising the civilized development achievements of the Kingdom. أنا استسمح يا سيدي منكم بعد لي بيتين لأن الشعر يفخر بك وتفخر باسمك القيفان سلام الله على دولة غلاها وصفها العينين وغلاها تاج فوق الراس ما هو بس في الأعيان فرحنا بشوفكم سيدي الملك فرحنا بشوفكم سيدي الملك مع شعب هل البحرين عساكم في رخا وراحة وسعادة سيدي وامان لكم وقفات لا تنسى وتقدير وله تثمين ملكنا يا عساك بحفظ رب خالق الرحمن وسلم الصالحين His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sarfiya Palace members of the National Institution for Human Rights, led by Engineer Ali Drazi, where they handed His Majesty the institution's 2021 report. His Majesty affirmed Bahrain's firm approach in consolidating human rights in order to achieve security and reassurance for people. His Majesty affirmed the Kingdom's commitment to all international laws and regulations related to human rights, which stems from Bahrain's culture, identity, and religion. His Majesty praised the contents and achievements of the report on the local and international levels that aim to enhance that and develop human rights in the kingdom and cooperate with international organizations and institutions in this regard. He hailed the achievements made in this field, making Bahrain a model to be followed based on the principles mentioned in the National Action Charter and Constitutions in addition to the regional and international agreements approved by the kingdom. His Majesty praised the role of the Board of Commissioners of the General Secretariat of the NIHR and their efforts and responsibilities taken to enhance human rights 
rights and consolidate their values in the society, raise awareness and contribute to practice them freely. His Majesty wished everyone success in assuming their national responsibilities. Engineer Ledrazi stated that the NIHR is honored to deliver the report to His Majesty the King and he expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his constant care of human rights and for his directives to exert more efforts to enhance the field and protect it in line with the aspiration of His Majesty the King and the people of Bahrain in order to raise the status of the kingdom globally. He also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the government and all concerned bodies in this regard. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the European Union's Ambassador to Bahrain, Patrick Simonet at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the Kingdom's commitment to further strengthen international opportunities for cooperation in support of wide-ranging development goals and in line with the Kingdom's commitment to comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He emphasized the importance of continuing to strengthen relations with EU member states and expressed Bahrain's commitment to furthering strategic partnerships and increasing EU cooperation, in particular in the economic, investment, climate change and security fields. His Royal Highness noted that difficult global challenges have shown that nations must work together in a spirit and culture of cooperation and dialogue to achieve progress whilst maintaining peace, security and stability. Regional and international issues of common interest were discussed. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa also attended the meeting. The National Guard Commander General, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, honored the Special Operations Units for winning first place in the Combat Readiness 2020-2021 and the presence of National Guard Director of Staff Major General Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Saud Al Khalifa. His Highness expressed pride in the high level of readiness reached by the National Guard, which was demonstrated in the result of the Combat Readiness Inspection. The unit's win reflects the high efficiency of the military in carrying out the national duties entrusted to them with determination and sincerity which embodies the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness directed to continue the development and modernization for all sectors of the National Guard, which will reflect positively on strengthening their capabilities and protecting growth and prosperity for Bahrain. Special Operations Unit Head Lieutenant Colonel His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa expressed appreciation to the National Guard Commander for his directives and follow-up for the training programs to boost the combat and academic abilities of the National Guard officers. He added that the Combat readiness inspection confirms the Guard's continuous efforts to raise a level of military efficiency by assessing the preparations of the Guard's tactical and development units and their plans to achieve the highest levels of military discipline and readiness in accordance with the high-level training strategies pursued by the National Guard. Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa received the Speaker of the Arab Parliament Adil Assoumi and the participants in the conference to launch the document on education development in the Arab world in the presence of Education Minister Dr. Majid Al Naimi and SCDET members. His Highness welcomed the participants, stressing the importance of the event. He commended the efforts of the Speaker and members to adopt the document on education development in the Arab world, affirming the importance of education in enhancing the progress of nations. Al Assoumi addressed the open session of the conference and underlined the importance of strengthening relations and cooperation among Arab states, particularly in the field of education. The Education Minister reviewed the March of Education in the Kingdom and highlighted the numerous achievements attained by Bahrain thanks to the directives of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. At the end of the conference, His Highness was handed over the document on education development in the Arab world by Al Assoumi. His Highness expressed thanks to the Arab Parliament Speaker and members for their efforts they are making to enhance joint Arab action at all levels.
The video of Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa received the Speaker of Amman Shura Council Sheikh Khalid bin Hilal Al Maouli and the Speaker of the Council of Representatives Fozi Yizainal, Defense Affairs Minister Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Naimi and Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi were present. The video of Commander-in-Chief welcomed the Amman Shura Council Speaker and lauded the depth of relations between the two countries and their brotherly people. He also praised the advanced level reached by the Bahraini Omani cooperation at all levels, which is growing steadily across all fields. The meeting was attended by the General Command Headquarters Director, Major General Hassan Mohammed Saad, Assistant Chief of Staff for Logistics and Catering, Rear Admiral Yusuf Ahmed Malallah, the Head of the Military Judiciary and President of the Military Court of Cassation, Major General Dr. Yusuf Rajad Flayfil, Director of Military Cooperation, Major General Pilot Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa, and a number of senior of officers. The meeting was also attended by the Chargé d'Affaires of the Embassy of Amman, Dr. Mohammed bin Ali Al Blushi. The National Security Advisor, Royal Guard Commander, His Highness Major General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received Ambassador of the European Union to Bahrain, residing in Riyadh, Patrick Simonet. His Highness welcomed the EU diplomat, lauding cooperation between Bahrain and the EU and its development in various fields. He affirmed the deep-rooted strategic partnership between both sides and joint commitment to fostering security and peace in the region and achieving common interests. His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised the Bahraini participation in horse races in European forums after the horse bolt action of the victorious team recorded a new victory at Leicester Race Course in the UK. His Highness expressed pleasure with the victory, which embodies the position of Bahraini equestrian in foreign participations and the constant keenness to highlight horse sports in foreign forums. His Highness stressed that the, this achievement will motivate the upcoming Bahraini participations by continuing to make new records for the Bahraini speed races. He expressed appreciation for the outstanding efforts made by coach Fauzi Nas and coach Roger Werner in creating the ideal atmosphere for Bahrain's participation. His Highness praised the successful leadership of jockey David Egan and wished the team continued success in the next stage. Tusi's motorsport team reached the podium in the fourth round of the Intelligent Money British GT Championship, with the team achieving the best time of the season and the team's pair reaching the podium for the first time this season in the event that lasted three hours. The co-owner of the team, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, said that the team exerted a great effort and it was a pleasure to see the team's pair on the podium for the first time this season. His Highness Sheikh Isa stated that the team is in a good place overall and it is taking lessons from each race, expressing hope that the team will continue at the same pace in the second half of the season. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, affirmed that the Economic Recovery Forum, which will start next Sunday, opens up multiple horizons to consolidate the national partnership between the legislative and executive authorities and the private sector, as well as support the Economic Recovery Plan. He added that the forum is an opportunity to exchange views and visions between members of the legislative authority, government officials, in addition to officials in the private sector. Al Saleh said that the Economic Recovery Plan embodies the national care and responsibility to ensure the sustainability of economic growth and support the development process at all levels. He added that the forum is taking place at a time that requires concerted efforts in order to achieve comprehensive economic development. 
The Broadening the Tent, Freedom of Religion and Belief conference concluded, which is organized in cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the European Union under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The conference stressed the importance of strengthening the work of the principle of freedom of religion and belief and was a gateway to cooperation between the Kingdom and the European Union in the field of freedom of religion and the preservation and respect of pluralism. In Bahrain, 200 years ago, we in fact practiced the full freedom of uh, uh, worship uh, and we have a, uh, the Hindu temple which was established in 1819 uh, standing tall uh, as, a, as a proof and, uh, of this uh, freedom of uh, worship. So uh, 200 years ago where, when the world was in fact, uh, knew nothing about it, uh, about the free, this freedom. In Bahrain, in fact, we had uh, the practice but through the rulers of Bahrain. The special conference between EU and Bahrain, titled Broadening the Tent, which talks about inclusivity and coexistence, it's the need of the hour. In these troubled times where polarization is occurring, bringing people together, especially the common values and celebrating the similarities amongst different cultures, religions and existence. It's a very, very heartwarming effort. The important part of this event is that uh, it reiterates Bahrain's role as a, a, um, a very central part of uh, religious freedom because Bahrain is no stranger to religious freedom. At the turn of the century, in the late 1800s, when Jews first started arriving here, they had their freedom from that time. The Hindus were here before that and they had their freedom. The Christians were here uh, before that also and they also had their religious freedom. So uh, the main point is, for today, is to reiterate Bahrain's role as a land of uh, free religious um, uh, activity. Well, it's very important for us to be here because we are the only recognized uh, young Jewish organization. We are uh, framework partners of the Commission, uh, European Commission, and uh, the fact that we have this kind of event in the GCC region is also a factor of uh, change. Uh, but I understand also that Bahrain was a lighthouse over the last decades and uh, we are very happy to be here and to be able to discuss uh, these very fundamental issues. The Supreme Council for Women announced the start of the work of the 7th edition of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa Award for the Advancement of Bahraini Women. The Council called on public and private sector institutions, civil societies and individuals to participate in this award, which was established by royal order and bears the name of Her Royal Highness, the President of the Supreme Council for Women, out of her great keenness to provide everything necessary to provide support the patriotic effort directed towards the advancement of Bahraini women. Temkin has launched a new training program in financial management in partnership with BIBF designed to offer comprehensive training courses for 500 Bahraini entrepreneurs in its first phase. This is in line with Temkin's ongoing efforts to encourage enterprises to focus on success and productivity. And to speak more about that, we are joined by Temkin's Associate Director for Programs and Partnerships, Ms. Maryam Rahimi. Hello, Ms. Maryam. Can you tell us about the new training program and what it aims to achieve? Hello, thank you very much. Uh, so this program is again in partnership with the BIBF uh, to train 500 Bahraini entrepreneurs in its first phase. Uh, this is in line with our continuous efforts to encourage enterprises to focus on, on success and productivity. And uh, as well as this is in line with our, our, our initiatives to expand our training and development support to include both employees and business owners as well, which we think would help enterprises achieve their business objectives and enhance their performance. Uh, the program is comprehensive. It's a comprehensive training solution for entrepreneurs aimed at helping them develop their financial management and technical skills. Um, we are targeting entrepreneurs and micro, small and medium business owners. They're looking for specialized training opportunities to develop their skills and knowledge in financial management and strategic planning. Uh, we believe through this program, we will enable participants to manage their financial and budgeting more effectively and efficiently. 
through setting appropriate strategic plans to cater for each of their businesses according to their size as well as growth stage. Uh, entrepreneurs will also have the opportunities uh, to, to work closely on developing different um, skill sets around uh, financial and strategic planning, risk assessment, market gap analysis, as well as identifying opportunities for expansion, funding, investment, and much more. And what is unique about this program is that it combines both theoretical knowledge with practical experience through conducting one-to-one -one advisory sessions, which will provide each entrepreneur with guidance to optimally implement these strategies and plans within their enterprise. And that was Tim Keynes, Associate Director for Programs and Partnerships, Ms. Mariam Rahimi. Thank you for joining us. The National Space Science Agency represented in the Kingdom of Bahrain is in line is in the process of preparing the report of the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs regarding awareness raising and capacity building related to the implementation of the LTS guidelines with the participation of 34 countries. To speak more about this, we are joined by NSSA's space engineer, Mr. Ahmed Bushlebi. Hello, Mr. Ahmed. Can you tell us about the Kingdom of Bahrain's role in preparing the UN International Report and what are the aspects of this report? Hello, good evening. So regarding the participation of the National Space Science Agency, uh, the official representative of the Kingdom of Bahrain was to highlight the achievements and efforts of the Kingdom in creating a sustainable space sector by providing dozens of initiatives implemented in several aspects. The most important of which are building national cap capacities, spreading awareness of uh, the importance of space and its sciences at all levels its success in building a uh, satellite with their payload and their support for innovation in, it, in this vital aspect. So other aspects that support these efforts were also reviewed, including the preparation of a draft of the national space law and the regulations emanating from it and providing a supportive environment for incubating and developing the space sector. So the, the report is a documentation of what uh, of what has been implemented within the efforts of the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs in relation to raising awareness and building capacities related to the implementation of guidelines for sustainable use of outer space for peaceful activity. So the project aims to increase cooperation and exchange of experiences between specialized institutions and the space sector and to help in achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Moreover, the UNUSA conducted a series of uh, interviews with many countries and international organizations that highlighted their efforts and experiences in implementing the guidelines. Uh, the report collects information on experiences in implementing those guidelines, including challenges encountered and the potential capacity building needs in each country. And Mr. Ahmed, can you elaborate on the significance of Bahrain's participation in preparing such an international report and what does it reflect? So the importance of the participation lies in uh, highlighting uh, the role of the Kingdom of Bahrain as an active member of the international space community and in phasing its commitment to achieving the vision of peaceful use of outer space uh, in accordance with the principles contained in the National United, uh, United Nations Treaties for Outer Space Affairs. So such participation also contributes to increase, uh, to increase the cooperation and exchanging experiences between specialized institutions uh, and the space sector, in, in addition to achieving sustainable, uh, the sustainable development goals of the United Nations, as well as unifying the international efforts to address the uh, challenges within the sector, such as the phenomena of uh, the space debris and the issue of ownership outside the Earth. Uh, so that has begun to emerge recently as a result of the project that conquests and exploits the space resources. NSSA Space Engineer, thank you for joining us.